Dr. Deborah Show, and this is the show where we talk about bringing peace and calm into your life. Later in the show, we'll be talking about mental health stigma. We're live at KCSB FM Santa Barbara 91.9, and KCSB is a platform for cultural expression and thoughtful discussion, providing a diverse um, educational forum. And I'm a Santa Barbara-based clinical psychologist, and I specialize in pediatric neuropsychology. And during my clinical training and my current work, I've treated thousands of people, and I want to share my experiences with you. I'm also a UCSB alumni, and I live locally in Santa Barbara. And this show is all about our community and um, how to create compassionate conversations about our well-being and health. And it's wonderful to have you with us. As a reminder, um, I just wanted to let you know the show is psychoeducational, and it's in the area of neuropsychology um, and well-being, and it's not meant to replace professional mental health advice or therapy. So if you do believe you suffer from a particular disorder, please do reach out for professional help. And today on the show, we're going to be talking about mental health and well-being with a focus on media, journalism, and film with our very special guest, Emmanuel Etier. Emmanuel is an experienced and successful feature film producer. He's a music and film journalist for both rock magazines, French TV networks, and various websites for the last 25 years. And his movie and peace documentary, The Invocation, is narrated by Sharon Stone and stars um, Desmond Tutu, His Holiness uh, the Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra, as well as many worldwide peace activists. Um, he also made the movie Red Passage, which won many awards, and another inspiring documentary he made called Celebrating Women Around the Planet, Femme, Women Healing the World. And this documentary earned over 20 awards around the world. It's really great. If you haven't had a chance to see it, check it out. His third feature documentary, Shamanic Trekker, is about shamanism in Peru and also making peace one movie at a time. All these films are part of a series called The Oneness Collection, Documentaries for a Conscious Humanity. And these include The Cure, Healing the Mind and Healing the Body, Healing the Planet, and the politically loaded documentary We the People, A Re-Evolution of Economics and Politics. Emmanuel is planning on directing a biopic about the poet Charles Bukowski, starring Sharon Stone, his producing partner for over a decade. Itier has been a buyer for many French and American film distrib distribution companies for the last 20 years. And Emmanuel is also the recipient of the 2018 Global Citizen Award, United, no United Nations Association, and he was named President of the Year 2018 by the Rotary E-Club of World Peace. He also sat on the board of directors of the Santa Barbara Film Festival for nearly a decade, and he currently sits on the board of directors of... Um, the Darfur Woman Action Group, which um, he's the founding, and he's also the founding president of the Rotary E-Club of the World Peace and part of the UN Association Santa Barbara Chapter and World Council of Wisdom. So as you can see, Mr. Etier is very involved in lots of different areas. He grew up in France and he moved to the U.S. 30 years ago and lives in Santa Barbara with his wife and three beautiful sons. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel. Well, hello, everybody. Are you awake and ready for an inspiring <laughs> conversation? That's right. We're here. We're going to motivate you. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're really excited to have you here. We're going to be talking about all these different kind of things we brought up. And um, I know Emmanuel has like such a wide variety of experience. I'm excited to hear what he has to say today. And we're talking about mental health stigma today because mental health is considered the largest public health priority and it's also the largest financial burden of any health issue in the world. That's according to the World Health Organization and World Economic Forum. Um, and also the other uh, piece I like to just bring up is that stigma and embarrassment are two of the top reasons why people with mental health issues don't seek help or medication. Um, and also that issues surrounding mental health affect everyone. So none of us are really free from having mental health issues at some point. I like to just briefly describe what is mental health. I think of it as like a physiological balance when our heartbeat is at a nice rate, um, our brain feels not too cluttered by too many thoughts, and that helps us to just kind of think more clearly and be able to deal with all the incoming stimuli, people, places, sounds, and other things. And it gives us a sense of inner peace. 
I was wondering, Emmanuel, how would you describe mental health? Uh, mental health? Hmm. That's all of us, right? The description is with the people, is it? <laughs> right. You know, Freud said that we're all sick and there are only degree of sickness that separates us from each other. And I, I, I truly believe that. The, the reason is that when we come out, you know, of the womb, obviously we're already, like, in despair because we are comfortable inside of your body, ladies, and then suddenly we are in this chaos-in-progress world. So it's a constant adaptation from the from the moment of birth to the moment of death, and some speculate maybe even up there. So who knows? Because after all, we are energies, and as Einstein and many said, you know, nothing is created, nothing is dying, everything is transformed. So mm. it's a constant state of transformation, which has in that uh, essence a hopeful message, which means that even so we might be born sick, that doesn't mean we need to die sicker. Uh, we can transform ourselves, we can re-evolutionize ourselves. The problem is, where are we today in society? Well, we are in a society, and it's not, even so I've got a thick accent, you're going to think I'm going <laughs> to bash America. Not at all. A, because I live here for 30 years. I'm like a political refugee here, in a way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really the entire world. The entire world is a mental sickness right now because of the medias, because of the government, because of uh, the tension, whether it's social, economical, political, religious. It's like everywhere you turn your head, you have a good excuse to get sicker. And the medicine that we are giving you is a joint, a drink, or some more antidepressants. So I'm not sure that's the response, right, Dr. Debra? <laughs> I think what you started out saying is makes a lot of sense. Actually, there's a really famous French, um, and if, as you can see here, Emmanuel has a very strong French accent, but what? there's a very famous French psychologist, and his name is Andre Green. He's not alive anymore, but we studied kind of what you're talking about. When the, And there's a picture in the book, the very first picture is a baby coming out of the womb. And basically, it's exactly like you said, where we are in this nice, safe, warm cocoon, and we come out, and that's where they say the death instinct really starts, actually, and they call that in French, petit mot, little death. La petite mot. La petite mot, mm -hmm. thank you. And so I think throughout our life we have that, right? But also then you're talking about how we respond to, you know, if we have an issue or we have something we have to deal with, do we turn to something that doesn't, you know, do something that's healthy for us? So, um, great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's very complicated because, you know, obviously, and we just did a, a documentary about this. It's called The Cure, and you can find it on iTunes, Amazon, all the, the platform. Uh, and, and it is about healing the mind, healing the body, and healing the planet. And it's indeed a whole approach that needs to be uh, dealt with. You know, it's not only about trying to be great in your mind or be great in your body or try to have a green planet, it's all of the above at the same time, 24-7. And it concerns 7 billion people and the entire planet and all the countries of the world. So it's a, it's a real global phenomenon and, and a global issue. And, and that's why that until we have 7 billion souls awaken and working together... It won't work if it's only about the U.S. working on their own or France working on its own or, right, or you working here at radio, radio station on your own. We need to more than ever connect with each other. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not, you know, connecting social medias narcissistically with a selfie, me, 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 me. No, it's uh, me, myself and we. How do we go that from that I generation to a we world? And that's not so easy because indeed... At school, like we're on the ground of a beautiful, uh, you know, UCSB, a beautiful university. But still, the the it's the illusion that you are the center of the world. You're gonna be the next CEO, and you you are the the one that's gonna lead the world and next president. No, it's we are the CEOs. We are the leader of the world. We are the president. I always say, you know, and I'm running for president in 2022. So I've started to really thought about how to make a difference and how to be different. And how to be different, it's one sentence. It's either people, we president. Either people, we CEO. Mm -hmm. I pray the people, we messiahs. So when we have that thinking, I really think we will change the world. But for now, all we can do is invite people to wake up and join us. It's true. Well, there's the collective unconscious and um, in... Carl Jung, he'd call that the anima mundi, the soul of the world that 
Um, and also he would say that we're all dreaming the same dream, not not literally, but figuratively. We all have the same angst and woes and problems, but we just, they manifest differently. Um, and but, actually, we might dream the same dream because, you know, on a quantum physical level, it's proven that all our molecules are intertwined. So the notion of the divine, of oneness, it's not BS. It's a physical particle reality where if I'm sick, sooner or later, you will get sick because my molecules are vibrant all over the world and they are all connected to other molecules. So that, that's why it's very important to heal yourself and heal one soul at a time. You know, it's not just a figurative figure of speech. It's a reality that people need to be conscious about, you know. And, and I wish that every morning people would consciously wake up in the morning and say, instead of saying, hey, how am I going to make a million dollars? Hey, how am I going to find the perfect girlfriend or boyfriend? Hey, how am I going to get my best car? No, it's like, how am I going to be of service for somebody else? The day mm -hmm. we wake up, 7 billion people, and we tune in about looking at each other and say, hey, what do you need? What do you need? Because I'm every, I, have, I have everything in, in me for you, and you have everything in you for me. You know, mm -hmm. we are all genius about something, and we are idiots about many things. So it's like, let's put it in common. Let's share it, that brilliant mind that we are, and you will see results. I think it's true. We kind of somehow repel each other at times, but we really need to actually join in on each other. Uh, we love each other. We, we just do. care to love each other because we are told to hate each other. Right. Especially right now with a lot of silly president all over the world, not only in America. Well, yeah. So I think we're at a really crucial crossroads, though. And I look at this as like an opportunity because Gandhi always said, out of turbulence comes peace. So I feel like we're in this very turbulent time, but it's going to maybe manifest in something really positive. And Gandhi said... You know, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. So it's exactly right. what I'm talking about. It's a frame of mind that needs to change. As long as we have the mind in a, in a mind gel, what I call a mind gel right now, totally formatted, locked, we will fail. We need to liberate the mind. That's because it's scary for people to think differently. And, and also to think to face, free. And to also think to, free. to think free because we're taught not to do that and to face themselves because once we become, we become aware of ourselves, then what do we do with that? But fortunately, there's a lot of great resources and things that you can turn to to get help. If, Like the Dr. Deborah show, yeah, for example. Exactly. Well, and if you're just joining us, we're exploring the relationship between mental health and media and film and journalism. And I know that many of our like mainstream perceptions and ideas about mental health stem from our movies and TV and media. And I think that many times portrayals of mental health issues do get sensationalized. And so one of my interests is how mainstream entertainment is drawn to the complexity and fragility of the mind and how these concepts get put into creative drama. Um, and I'd just like to talk for a minute about mental health stigma because I think it's just an important topic. And I know people don't really want to talk about it, but just for a minute and then we'll continue to hear more from Emmanuel about um, mental health and well-being in media. I think that, um, you know, stigma can make a person's difficulties much worse and much harder to recover from. And it also reduces someone from a whole person to um, a tainted and discounted one, which is really painful. And I think that society, in many ways, has stereotypical views about mental health and how it affects people. And many people believe people with mental health issues or illness are violent and dangerous, when in fact a person who has mental health problems is more likely to harm themselves or at a larger risk of being attacked than harming other people. So I just kind of like to talk about that. And then there's kind of two th stigmas I broke down to social stigma and self-stigma. Social stigma is when attitudes and discriminating behavior are directed toward individuals with mental health problems um, as the result of a label they may have been given. And self-stigma is when we um, internalize, um, if, if we are the mental health sufferer, perceptions of discrimination. And I think that is really um, can be very detrimental. So um, I think, you know, that's why I thought it'd be nice to have Emmanuel come in because I think these situations do get exacerbated by the media. But also I think they could be a really positive outlet like what Emmanuel is doing with the media and how he's um, educating people and he's going around the world and meeting people who are inspirational and who have lots of experience. Um, because I think, you know, we, we can maybe shift our idea that mental health issues aren't always violent, criminal, evil or, you know, unable, a person's unable to live a fulfilled life. So that's my kind of idea on stigma, just so you get educated about that yourself. Um, I was wondering, Emmanuel, um, why do you think taking care of our mental health by being able to just talk about it like we are is really essential? 
Well, it's essential because it might inform you about who you are. And I think that who you are, what you think is going to uh, influence uh, your doing. You know, I always say, uh, I think, therefore I am, therefore I do. So it's several steps, or it should be several steps before any action. It's about evaluating. It's about cause and consequences. Um, and it's about being in relationship with yourself and other. And that's uh, the key word you used during uh, your expose that we just heard, the word relationship. For me, we are in a situation of failure greatly right now because of that dissolvement of relationship. You know, it's, we are not into relationship today. We are into consumership, mm -hmm. attack ship, uh, killing ship. You know, it's, it's insane and it's everywhere. Like, for example, yesterday I was at the YMCA in Montecito. I put CNN on and somebody rushed to me and said, oh, no, sir, you cannot watch uh, uh, a political stations. And I'm like, what? They say, oh, yeah, 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 yesterday there was almost a fight, a fist fight between people who are watching Fox and people watching CNN. So now we have decided to ban all political stations. Wow. And I'm like, oh, great. So <laughs> what next? We're not going to be able to listen to Dr. Deborah or we are a T-shirt versus long sleeve. I mean, w really, we are, we are in an insane well, that's what, time that's right what now we do is where we there is no more relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what we do is we turn and we just shut down each other or the topic because we don't want to have conflict. I think we're taught, especially in America, maybe in France, it's much different. It's the same. It's everywhere. The, not the, to have the, conflict. The mental sickness is worldwide. Trust me. Oh, so. right. I believe that. I was just thinking of how the denial, like people don't want to deal with the actual it's the same. issue. Look, in France, we have a big problem. Which is that two people have a different idea. Yeah, we have big issues with migrants as well and, you know, Islam as well. And people are just in denial and they prefer clash and eventually have the, the, the temptation to elect an extremist to solve the problem. As if closing the border and building a wall is going to save you from the reality of the oneness of the world. Dream on, you know. Exactly. Well, it it's just, it's just a cement wall, but you still are going to have to deal with people. But that's but people like that. Like you're saying, there's a mentality that has been become very ingrained. People sadly more and more are addicted to fascism and dictatorship, and that's very scary because that's all we had Hitler and really some dark times. So really, people, that's what you want again? Don't think so. Well, probably the people that are listening to the show maybe aren't as. Maybe maybe they're more open to different political ideas. Um, but I do think it's really important that, you know, we take care of our mental health by being able to discuss our emotions, thoughts, and feelings. I mean, it would be great if at the at the gym if they just had each other express themselves and let it be and, and to let each person have their own choice, I guess. Absolutely, and I propose, you know, a, a town hall meeting and let's debate. Let's mm -hmm. understand why are you so offended if I watch CNN or if somebody watching CNN is offended that somebody is watching Fox. Actually... Personally, I never voted for a party. I think parties are silly. There is great thing and bad thing in everywhere. It's, it's all about individuals. So it's like either the best men or the best women, whether they're Republican or Democrat or Green or whatever. Right. It shouldn't be about a party because a party is not the representation of the wholeness of the country. So it's like, why do you want to confine yourself and limit yourself in the little box that supposedly somebody else anyway put you in from the beginning, giving you the illusion, you're safe in that box. If you get out, you're lost. You're in hell. Well, that is true. We do live that way. We live compartmentalizing and putting things in little boxes on shelves. But and I it's would, an illusion. There is no it's box. It's an illusion. It's, it's true. An, again, it's mind gel. It's mind gel. I like that. It's true. It is an illusion. I like um, what Alan Wallace says, the guy that works with the Dalai Lama, that like, even if we sit in a room with nothing in it for, for you know a minute, we could create a whole bunch of things that may not be really there. So it's true. Um, I found a new word today. It's called trivialization. And it's, I found this in relationship to the media because I always do a little research. But trivialization suggests the downplaying of the negativity of these conditions by oversimplifying, portraying a disorder incorrectly or making it more severe or less severe. This is in the media. Um, and so I thought that was an interesting just idea about how maybe from misinformation or maybe negative attitudes. And even, I guess, what you're saying is politically, right, we have that same issue is where we maybe get misinformation and we become isolated and we get these kind of negative attitudes. But, you know, really a, a good sign of health is openness, even if you disagree, is to be able to have these discussions and be talkative and share. 
Um, and the reason, even uh, just on an economical level, it's because that person you don't agree with might be your next customer right. or your next client. So be kind, just smile. You never know. I mean, who you're driving by. Hey, we are all interconnected and interdependent. The day you realize this, there's much less frustration, anger, and fight. That will know? be a powerful... It's all about healthy compromise, like in a marriage, you know. Right. But Nobody's I mean, right, nobody's wrong. How do you think wrong. we can teach people that? That's like such a huge Well, we obstacle. teach it at, at the, you know, you and I have kids. That's where you teach it. You know, at all age, uh, it's not that it's too late, but it takes more time to liberate ourselves from the mind gel that we were put into. Although, actually, but with I our kids, I see it as a parent. It's awful how parents from the age four are forcing their kids to believe that, to eat that, to pray that God, to dress like this. It's incredible. Please don't put them in the mind gel. You know, that's not your job as a parent. You're just supposed to expose them, guide them, and love them, and that's it. Well, they that are smarter than to, you anyway. That relates the next to all generation. the other problems you're talking about. Because if we don't, if we don't have the ability to do that with our kids, then it's really related to our own control too. Mm -hmm. So you know, it oh yeah, it's a reflection from of within. The control freak that we are of the sick person that we are but we really actually can't control i mean if you if you're listening and you want to try as an experiment try for 10 seconds to see if you can control your mind <laughs> for what you want to think about because i can guarantee you won't be able to do it and that's an illusion too that we can control our mind i mean we might be able to control what we want to have for dinner tonight a little bit of body fat that's all you know I, I'm going to the gym once a week <laughs> and then two. you have those interesting experiences <laughs> especially as a frenchman with all these croissants man that's horrible i know i love forget the, control the french have such Eat good the croissant. food <laughs> well don't you think food is a very important well, part, it's of, part of it you know again I mean, that's what i was saying very... healthy mind healthy body healthy planet you know obviously if you eat all day long hot dogs and cook you, i don't think you're gonna last very long and it's gonna probably intoxicate your mind as well because all this negative over sugar and fat is gonna just perturbates your don't you molecular think that, like, connection, your with, synaptic connection It's in your true, brain. You, you have to eat healthy. Of course. I mean, I think it is interesting because people do talk about French people and they're like, you know, well, they eat croissants and chocolat and all the yummy things, you know what I mean? And then drink wine and smoke cigarettes and those things and somehow... They seem to well, be... Well, it's, it's in balance, too. You know, it's it's kind of an illusion and uh, and a cliche to think that's all we eat all exactly. day long, 24 seven. Right, and cheese. So it's moderation, it's quantity, it's also having a balanced uh, health activity. So it's many things. And it's also the ingredients. Because, you know, when I right. go to the... I just came back from the Cannes Film Festival, and basically what I ate was croissant and pizza. And I didn't gain a pound. Because it's but, really good quality. But it's because it's, uh, it's organic food, it's organic ingredient. There is no extra preservative, salt, sugar. Here we have a tendency to think more sugar, more salt, more anything, more, more, more is better. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. More, more, more. Simple is better, yeah. We'll bring cancer. We'll bring all type of Alzheimer's diseases and other. So, no, it's not. It's about balance. So it's just balance. It's about common sense. Exactly. You know, that's a problem. We have lots of common sense. So it's time to... Whew, Wake up. Again. We've gotten very carried away. Well, we live in a very hedonistic society and a world, and hedonistic means pleasure seeking. So, and also, we've lost our sense of empathy for each other. So, I mean, if it's like if, you're so, if you drop your cell phone down the volcano and you're upset and it's very tantamount to you, that's tantamount for you. But if it's somebody else that drops their phone, you're like, ah, who cares? That's kind of our way we relate with each other. So, we really have to shift that because it's not healthy for us either. Um, I was wondering, Emmanuel, can you explain how you think film and journalism in our community and, you know, in Santa Barbara relates to our mental health? Like, you know, going out and seeing movies or reading things or those kinds of pieces. Because, again, it's a notion of oneness and everything has an effect on everything. So, like, uh, listening to a show like yours, it's going to, of course open the mind, inspire, want to seek out, you know. If you're going to see one of our documentaries, of course it's going to open your mind and want you to seek out. So I think, again, it's, a, it's to realize that, you know, God is all and all is God in that sense of oneness. You know, oneness is about everything, everybody. There is no separation. It's a really a convergence of genuses, of information, of exchanges, of sharing, uh, for the greater you and the, for the greater we. Again, me, myself, and we. Have all, I know you've interviewed a lot of, um, you know, world leaders. Do you think that they, do they ever talk about mental health or... or Not in this term. They don't pinpoint the, the, the qualificative of mental health. Yeah. But obviously it's about health. 
So, so again, right. health is not again, only about when you say mental, the mental is linked to the body and is linked to the planet. Sure. So I think that's, that's even there in a show like this, we have to make understand people that it's not because you are after given the illusion that you are feeling better in your mind, that your body doesn't need attention, that your environment doesn't need attention. Right. So you have to pay attention constantly, 24-7, to why do I think, why do I eat, and how do I exercise, and what environment do I live in? Do I live in next to a nuclear station, or do I live next to a healthy mountain full of oxygen or, or ocean? So... It's, it's all of that. It's constantly about finding that balance between the mind, the body, the planet. It's, mm -hmm. it's not so easy and it it's takes a lot hard. of time. And again, it takes seven billion of us to adjust each other and to encourage each other and to reach out to each other with solution. You know, that's why it kills me every time they have this monkey G20 summit where everybody is pretentious and pretending is the savior of the world, trying to, to scam us with some silly... BS meeting with some dictator or whatever and saying they have solved every problem when they come home and, and people analyze qu uh, closely if they have solved everything or anything and no, they have solved nothing. And, and it's, it's in, unthinkable to me. It's like, how can these guys, and it's many guys, can sleep at night? You know, we, we are 7 billion people, but we have over 5 billion people living with $100 or less per week or sometimes per month. How is that thinkable when we never had that much money available, resources available, energies, uh, or anything, geniuses? It's not mathematically possible if you put all that together and you manage it together. But again, the problem is we don't have a united world. You know, the UN, United Nations, is an illusion. It's a joke. These people are living on another planet. You need a new United Nations, though. Well, because I think need, the United Nations is the a good idea. Thing, again, it's like it's, you don't need a new. It's here. It's like people, again, wake up and realize you are a united world. So the only way to live healthily with a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy planet is to live into oneness in the notion that if you get sick, I'm going to get sick. If you get poor, I'm going to get poor. If you We're die, mm -hmm. I will die. So it's, again, to thrive, it's about we thrive. It's not about me, myself, and I. If you think like this, you will fail forever. And worse, you will bring us in your failure. Well, also, I think that that person usually isn't internally very happy. You know what I mean? Because they don't have like, anything to fall back on except for what's exteriorly out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You know, somebody acting like this, obviously, has a lot of mental issues. That's true. Right. Because well, it all gets projected out like a projection machine. I mean... <laughs> we won't make anybody, but come on, guys. If you see these guys acting the way they act, they are not happy. You know, somebody happy doesn't act like this. How do you think Emmanuel, um, the media or film or journalism, accepts or rejects mental health stigma? Well, they don't even address it. I mean, you are one of the rare show dealing with the issue. Again, they are scared to face the man and the woman in the mirror. You know, and our media today is, are so polarized. That's why when... I go to the gym until yesterday. I wasn't only watching CNN. I was watching CNN and Fox to understand, okay, how these people can be so polarized. I do that too at the gym. It's like, it's so sad. It's like, guys, you are in love with each other. Just say, I love you. And then argue about that love. But don't argue about how you're going to kill each other and take over each other. And that, that will never happen. Do it's you, an illusion. Do you think that that's more men or women? Or do you think you see women? Well, it was men, but, but that's because from the age of four, you know, men are told that they are the supermen of the planet. So we have a superman complex. Mm -hmm. But less and less, it's, uh, it's not only men, it's also women. Because mm -hmm. now women are being told, no, 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 you're the super girl of the planet. And that's it. Don't take no for an answer. Don't take any crap mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. any man. And so it's, it's like revenge time. And so we are falling into women extremism. So we, we went into a men extremism world. Now it's a men and women extremism world. And, and it's everywhere. And there's no respect for men or women. Too. Well, in a way, we've it's, just it's become awful. extreme in so many things, you know, with, with every area of our life. We've just lost touch with this balance. I know. And, and, and again, it's, it's like this, that mind has been kept in jail. The, the mind of women has been kept in jail so much into slavery almost. Right. You know, I, I, and actually slavery, really, because men had, had so 
limited power and a limited action, even in the US or France. They couldn't vote for a certain time. They couldn't have a bank account. So you ladies develop so much frustration, anger and hate versus us men that it's no wonder you want to put us in a cage now. So I get it, you know. I, I just think it. that now more women. That's why I smile women. even more than ever. Right, because you're very supportive <laughs> I, of women. I'm scared. Please don't no, me. <laughs> don't be afraid of the women. I'm just Actually, French. I do think, though, that there's a large group of women that really do support men, you know, because I think men contribute a, a very important piece. It just is more the idea, I guess, of like what you're saying, women not having the same rights or, you know, have, having these same choices. So basically you're saying that they, nobody really discusses that. No, everybody's scared of the subject. They run away. Or they, they take the subject, uh, hijack it into an extreme way. Like even in Hollywood today, where the, the Me Too movement now is creating more segregation than ever, where men and women are even scared to talk to each other. Mm. Yeah, so it's like, that doesn't solve Too anything. Too divisive, yeah. That doesn't solve I mean, it's clear that obviously there have been abuse, so the abuse has to be condemned, judged and incarcerated if there was a, an act of rape or anything like this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, or pedophile or whatever. Absolutely, no tolerance, tolerance zero. But, but that's it, you know, and that's a minority of men. But we, the large majority of men, just love to flirt with you, ladies. And that's it. And by the way, you love to flirt with us, so let's <laughs> stop being hypocrites with each other. That's true. I think that there's, yeah, it's just where it reaches a certain... There's a big difference between flirting and rape, right? Exactly. I mean... There's a huge oh. difference. Well, and I mean, I think just being on UCSB campus, I mean, I have people from UCSB I see, and it's like, it is surprising, actually, still to me. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but I think in the last two months, I've had five women tell me, I mean, they weren't raped this month, but it does happen. And I think, but men get raped too. You know, men have things happen. I listen to me in Hollywood and even in France. Mm -hmm. My first encounter in the business were pretty rough yeah. because it was men coming to men in a very violent, yeah. uh, dominative way. And I didn't get the job because I didn't do the act and perform so the way they not, wanted me. It's not, so it's not, you know, I'm part of the Me Too movement. Exactly. Know, it's not I've gender specific. Too. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. So, I mean, it's just good for people to know. And I'm a know. macho guy, so it can happen to anybody, you know. It's like, no, exactly. there are monsters everywhere. Yeah, I mean, how do you deal with that? Do you have a way you... Well, the, the, the way I dealt with it, I remember it was at the Cannes Film Festival. I was looking for a ticket to go see a movie, and some guy took me in his office and showed me his uh, private part and said, hey, you want a ticket? Just kneel down and perform. And so I stood up and I said the five, four-letter word, and mm -hmm. I ran away. Mm -hmm. so. so you kind of just stood up to him. But I'm sure he's doing that with other people. Of course. That's a problem. So this type of man needs to be persecuted. Like, uh, actually, I have a friend of mine in the business who told me it happened to him in Hollywood with a woman. You know, he was a gay guy and mm -hmm. he was, same thing, kind of forced to perform or he wouldn't get the job he wanted to get. So, so you much know, pressure. the abuse can really come from women as well. And people are afraid to stand up because then they might lose their career or their job. And not or, get the job. Uh, and not yeah. get, you know, I've, I lost so many job opportunities because I didn't perform. Although, look at how many man. amazing other jobs that you've had. So, yeah, and I know. it all works so, out. So, again, it is about to address the minor extreme problem that we have but no remember it's not the norm it's it's a it's a small problem but it's big enough that we need to address it so it doesn't spread but at the same time be careful not to make a generality of it it's kind of like everything and don't let's start to look at each other as a threat because if not we and we're gonna wake up in a episode of the handmaid tale mm -hmm, like we all feel like we're Hello, each other's enemies Gilead is uh, almost in in progress right now, you know, the, the representative right now, we, you know, it looks like the guy in Gilead, so be careful. In, what, what, in Gideon? Is that what you said? Gilead. You know, Gilead is that, that America in a future that has fallen apart in the handmaid tale, where basically there is a very fascist regime taking taking over. Is that over. a movie or is that... It's a TV show. Oh, it's a you TV show. You never heard show? about the handmaid tale? Well, I don't really you watch, have to watch that TV. As, as, you know, as the doctor that you are... It's an amazing psychology uh, I know mental more... uh, study of, about human nature falling into fascism and thinking it's right. Hmm. It's right to use women for procreation, force them to procreate, but keep them in a jail. Uh, it's right to control everybody the way they should dress, the way they should listen to that music or not, the way they should eat that food or not. It's, it's awful, but we could be heading toward that 
that if we don't do something more. Mm-hmm. Again, we need to nobody, be more aware. Nobody thought when Hitler was uh, elected that we were going to fall into almost a decade of uh, mm-hmm. mental madness all over Europe and the world. You know, it, it, you know the war reached the coast of uh, America. So, it's, you know, America got into the war only because they were attacked, Pearl Harbor. You know, without that attack, probably we still will, you know, be under a rash, another descendant of Hitler. Do you, you think, don't know. I mean, do, you think with your com- do you think with your combination of the media work you do with bringing people together and, 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 you know, kind of getting people enlightened and more educated about, you know, these other ideas that you're talking about, do you think that that there's a resistance to your, like, when you have those movies and you show them out <laughs> with other people in the film industry... Are they do they embrace that because they like no, no, those they ideas? No, they are scared. They are scared of somebody like me. Yeah, somebody that talks unusual. loud about real issues and somebody that's got a, a a real way to counter that formatting, that perpetuation of the mind jail being imposed on every children. So yeah, it's it's sadly it's no. I'm not so much embraced. And on top of that, in my case, I've got that that accent, like you mentioned, which makes you look even crazier than you are. So, well, but you do, you do. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's very difficult to be a manualite. People think, you know, ah, oh, manualite is this billionaire living in Santa Barbara, having an easy life, meeting, you know, all these people and having a great life. I say, no, I'm, I'm struggling one day at a time to survive and, and make another movie and, and pay my rent and all that. You know, it's, it's very difficult. But, you know, if you any, really believe in anybody something. who's mm-hmm. a real punk, meaning a real revolutionary, has a tough life, you know, until he dies, probably. That's so, true. Or if he gets elected for president, he's got maybe four or five years of happy window of time. Well, you're and that's just, it. Because then, then you're, butting up, against, shot, so who knows, you're you know? butting up against all the resistance, yeah, of everybody and then to it's stand up for tough. something you believe in. It's very tough to be a manuality, trust me. <laughs> I think it's great. You might be, I think but you're you know, starting a revolution. With it is I love, you know, that's all. That's all I can do, you know. Well, and, and you surround the, yourself and beyond with people. The, 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 the whining and the, the feeling sorry for myself, you know, I'm, I've got, plus I don't have the time, I've got three young boys to feed and a wife and three cats, so it's like, I have to be open for business 24-7, and so yes, I cry for two seconds, I get drunk for another two seconds, and the rest of the 24 hours, I work my butt. You have an intense speed you're going at, but I do think it's, it is interesting, because I know you still interview a lot of really famous people, um, and I, it's just probably a dichotomy that you live in, you know, having these movies that you're very driven to, to create and to, you know, spread that news. And then you probably sit in these other interviews, which are much more formatted, right, that are not as interested in that topic. Yeah, but I, I always pose the issue of, uh, of we the people. You do. You know, even if it's just a apparently dumb movie about sharks eating people, I'm going to talk about relationship. I'm going to talk about politics. I'm going to you, talk about politics. You inserted in there a little. I find a, a, mm. a metaphors in everything because everything is about metaphor. Everything is about symbol, about images, and everything is about we, the people, really. So everything is political. You know, politic means from, uh, comes from politics, which is for the people, for the city. So everything is political. You know? That's true. Uh, religion is political. Economics is political. A show like this is political. Everything is. It is, and it's it's fine. It's healthy about to talk about politics. If you don't talk about politics, that means you don't talk about nothing. You talk about what? Oh, it's well, that's sunny a new today. phenomenon. Cold, People yeah. are becoming more comfortable because it's been so passe to talk about politics or anything that's disagreeable. It's kind of like what happened with you at the gym. But I think we really, I mean, need to just be able to have these like kind of disagreeable topics. Absolutely, and and realize. Deep, deep down, we agree much more than we disagree. You know, again, we are all married to each other. We all kind other. of want the same thing. We are all mm-hmm. married to each other, whether we want it or not. And so, sure, that we will approach things differently, but the big picture is the same. And the big picture is uh, to have a roof above our head, to have some food in our plate, mm-hmm. and to go and sleep uh, with a happy smile, you know. And uh, the sleep sometimes might be the last one. So, so. Be grateful, be thankful, be full of smile. Full of Actually, there's a love. great movie I saw. Have you seen the movie Happy? Yes. I love that movie just sure. because it's kind of indicative or explains kind of what you're talking about where there's people all over the world living in places that don't have a lot, three-sided, you know, shacks in monsoon weather, and they're super happy. So you don't have to have a lot of stuff to make you happy. It comes from within you. Well, again, it's the media giving you the illusion that if you have... 
the the most better looking husband or wife, you're happier. The bigger house, mm-hmm. you're happier. The bigger ca- no. But then once those people it's, get it's that, it's they're nothing. Like, eh, yeah. It's an illusion. And plus, when you've got it, you want more anyway. So you're never happy on that level. The only time you're happy is when really you put a smile on your face and you can disconnect from it all. Mm-hmm. You know? Try that. It can and be simple you, too. If you find that sun within, that's happiness. That's true. It doesn't have to be complicated. Well, I was really excited. I was telling you about this mass media intervention for reducing mental health related stigma that is in the media. And there's a study that was done in London. It was London, Japan, um, Germany. I think they all collaborated. And basically, because they know how widespread mental health stigma is and, and the major adverse effects on the lives of people with those mental health problems, um, that its two major components are discrimination, you know, being treated unfairly, and prejudice, stigmatizing attitudes. So there's these anti-stigma, I thought this was cool, anti-stigma initiatives that include mass media interventions. So this is kind of why I was thinking of some of these ideas. I don't know if any of these would, would work, but... Um, Basically, they were talking about using um, the media like through, you know, the TV, commercials, podcasts, all these different ways to reduce the discrimination. Um, And also what we're putting, you know, the primary messages um, on the Internet and in print are really important. Um, I was wondering, Emmanuel, what has your work in the media field taught you about the attitudes that are held toward mental health? Well, I think what he taught me is that there is nothing that can be replaced from a direct interaction with each other. I think, again, uh, to address the issue of mental health, we need to come as a community. So we need to reconnect physically. We need to get together, look at each other, you Mm -hmm. know. It's not enough to be connected with the cell phone or the app or the radio show. You need to get together. To so, experience so it. So mm-hmm. make a commitment to yourself and your friend to get together at least once a week physically, whether it's the gym or the bar or the church, whatever. But get out and connect physically and you'll see a lot of difference. Because we, it's interesting, how, again, that, that notion that, you know, that quantum physics, physical notion that we are one, when we are together, it's interesting how even if we come with fear or anguish or despair, just a hug, a smile, it's going to neutralize that fear, that despair, and it's going to transform it. Mm-hmm. So, so you have to take a chance on others because they will transform you. If you can transform yourself, there is hope in the others. You know, there was a, a, a existentialist writer named Sartre who said, mm-hmm. hell is the others. I don't agree with that. I think heaven is the others. The heaven on earth, it's we the people. Hell is the individual feeling that he's lost, he's isolated, and he's got no recourses, but some silly drugs, or even worse, contemplating suicide. And, and trust me, especially on the campus, the kids know that. There's never been that much higher rate of suicide all over the world than now, because mm-hmm. people are so desperate that mm-hmm. they think there is no recourse. But mm-hmm. well, the recourse is to get out of your dorm room, get out of your, the situation, and seek out. Just just run toward anybody in the street and say, I need help. I think, though, I that need help. when I brought this idea up, I agree with you, but I noticed when I brought this up, um, a student told me, well, you know, our phones, like, especially if we have disabilities, they're like the way that our social media, that's the way we connect with other people. Because it's, the illusion, this misno- it's the illusion of the way that they were given to them and told. Exactly. They were told. Right. They were may even impose a phone. I mean, I see it with, again, being a parent. I see friends giving a phone to their kids at age five. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're insane. Because basically you're teaching him disconnection. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You're not teaching well, that's him or her connection. But that doesn't connect. That's, that's an excuse not to connect. Right. But I think, though, you know, if you've grown up with that mentality, you know what I mean? Then you really believe that. So... And, and then that's also, why. That's and then if you go watch a movie, you go watch a movie, you know, you go to a, go to a concert, it's all everybody's over. doing it. And it it's, kind of becomes like, oh, well, they're doing it. But it's not it. because everybody's doing it that it's right. Obviously, right. it's wrong. And we know that now on a neurological level, it definitely disconnects you as an individual. Mm-hmm. And that's where we are right now. We are in zombie land. Mm-hmm. More and more, we have an army of zombies driving, an army of zombies in the store, shopping, 
an army of zombies in the club dancing, you know, and you know, an army of zombies even having sex. So, you know, it's, it's horrible. So it's like drop your device and connect. Hug each other. It's very addictive, each though. Other. It's so just hard. Just look at each other in the... It's true. Hold hands. It's whatever. so important, actually, just for our human, just being a human being, too, like of you're course. saying, too, because... Well, plus that's how we, we create life. Do you think we're going to create life by looking at each other through FaceTime? Well, also the way well, we learn. Later, there won't be any more couple the way we grow. babies. Yeah, well, there are people, fewer people Absolutely. getting married and having kids, so maybe that's partially related to So many to of that. my friends are giving up. So, ah, no, yuck. I don't need it. I'm, I'm, I'm mm. self... I'm self-sufficient. <gasps> what? The day you pronounce this word, you are really mentally sick. You yeah. will never be self-sufficient. Thank God. If not, what's the point of being seven billion people? Well, also, there's the idea that I think we're supposed to live for another day. Like, if if we get to this place, then we'll feel better. If we do this, then we'll... Versus just taking the action right now. And I, I agree with you. I think we spend a lot of time talking about stuff but we don't actually do anything so i'm always trying to have some action or ideas or you know create create something out of that um but i do think that there's lots of ways i mean i feel like you have such a powerful position in your media field that i just you know there's like so much media there's the print newspapers magazines billboards pamphlets flyers coasters recordings audio cassettes video you know there's like radio television cinema mobile phones internet Blogs, podcasts, you know, yeah, there's just so many just ways tools. we can... These are just an addition to a galaxy of tools we had before, mm-hmm. including, again, the meeting, the church meeting, the soccer meeting, the chess meeting. Well, it's just the way so, those are being given. So it cannot, it shouldn't replace that, again. You know, it shouldn't replace the meeting of the people. We cannot live as a society connected through artificial means. Don't you think we if there was fail. a council, a council like a media council that said, That exists forever, from the beginning there, of time. Really? It, all of that exists. It's just blah, blah, blah. They just don't the, do the, anything, yeah. The way it's solving when, is when people get together and mm-hmm. realize, okay, I've got this forever. How can we change? How can we trade? But they need to face each other. They cannot do it just for FaceTime, just for... But it exists. There are so many councils of everything. You know, there is so many United Nations of everything. You association, you know, NGOs. And there but is, not again, when it's there is doing no excuse it. not to have a better world today because there is all these resources. What there isn't is a complete synergy, a complete, as you said, realization that I am because we are. I am because we are. I am because we are. Exactly. Repeat this word every morning and realize that it's true. You only exist. You only mm-hmm. exist because of the others, mm-hmm. and, and plus it's true. You know, without a woman, I wouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. So hello, how could I even fight women? I would be fighting myself and killing myself, right? It's, but a it's a denial of ourselves. And it's the same mm-hmm. with business. It's the same for anything. It's the same with religion. It's a, so stop, stop. It's stop hard for people to stop. You are it. You're it's hard not. to stop. You know, I look at it like an old it wagon is, you wheel. Just say it. Rare, but rare, but it's hard to stop because, again, around. we've been so much programmed not to stop, right. not to stand Pause. still, mm-hmm. not to attack, mm-hmm. not to defend. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's really hard to be free again of your mind jail. It's really hard to break through the other side. Well, that's because we're all taught to be so conforming. But, you know, everybody's so different, and I think that's what makes the world really beautiful. And then we can all have something to contribute. We don't all have to do the same thing. Like you said, we don't no. have to all have the same goal to be the CEO of some company. And difference is complementary of each other. That's, that's mm-hmm. amazing. If you listen to anybody with any level of education or not, of richness of not, of, uh, of whatever culture they come from, it's amazing. It's like people are amazing. I've never met an idiot in my entire life. Even kids with autism or, you know, people who appear to be having some problem mentally or physically, they are, they are pure genius. They have something you don't have. So you need to embrace each other. It's kind of like, I just was thinking, I have a, a, um, some people I see who have a developmental disability. I mean, their IQ is lower than, than the standard. It's a different IQ. But That's I it. have to say, I really respect and enjoy them because they don't get wrapped up in all this other stuff. They actually kind of have the right idea, but what's really sad is those are the people who get taken advantage of because they're so different, you know, and they think, oh, they don't have anything to contribute. But actually, you know, you might, like you said, you might be surprised if you go out 
No, you Talk will be surprised. It's not might, it's you will. It's true. So and it might be pleasant. Dare to be surprised with another human being, and that's your path. It's of, kind of the wonder of life, health. right? Yes. I mean, that really is part of just learning and joy and Absolutely. experiencing, I you think. You know, it's taking on cha a chance on everybody. But people are taught not to take chances. Exactly. Unless you're gambling, So again, we go back to, you know, the mental gel, mind gel that people are building around your mind from the age of four. Don't hang out or with this crowd. Don't, don't believe that God. Don't eat that mm -hmm, food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't play with this so type. Da -da 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 -da. It's awful. It's awful it's the mental rape. It's mental rape. Yep. That we impose on each other. But we feel entitled to do that to each other for and some for reason. What? And what entertainment? That's all ego based because we feel like it's so we're so important and we have to make ourselves feel yeah. more important and exactly that the does, illusion. That's just, that's the, just like again. petting yourself. You don't uh -huh. need to pet yourself because I mean, the illusion really, you are so important. Well, yes, you are, but you're not. Well, life so is really a, about interconnectedness. That's a paradox. We are as much of a genius that we are as much an idiot. And if you live with that paradox, with that balance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you will be fine. Right. But if you think you are either, you're stuck. If you think you're an idiot, you will never do anything in your life. If you think you're a genius, you will also never do anything in your life because you will be despicable and repulsed by everybody else who's going to think, oh my God, what a a -o. Mm -hmm, you know, so. Exactly. Well, in, in psychology, they call that the tension of the opposites. It's like... I'm super happy and everything's great. And oh my God, I am miserable and everything's wrong. And I think we oscillate like a teeter totter. That's why I did all my research on too. And also how we regulate ourselves. You can feel that uncomfortability, but people don't like uncomfortability. I think they really are taught to fear that, you know, to mask it, to mask it, to if you, castrate to, it, to mm -hmm, suppress mm -hmm. it, to hide it. To lie like, to I themselves. would encourage you to be uncomfortable because actually now that I've gotten comfortable with it myself, it's taken me a long time, years. Um, I actually welcome challenges and uncomfortability because actually it might really make my life deeper or, I don't know, more vast. Um, so we have just a couple minutes left. I always like to ask you, I know I did kind of ask this, but I was wondering, have you heard of any campaigns or organizations that have a film journalism focus that like works toward reducing mental health stigma? Me? Exactly. You well, are. That's I, what was, I, do. I was you just know, thinking that's that. What I do. <laughs> you reach, are that. Reach out to me through my website or just Google my name, Emmanuel Itier, I T I R. Uh, WonderlandAntGroup.com is my website. Uh, and reach out to me. You know, you want to collaborate, you want to join forces. I'm all about that. I want to join and, you forces. You know, again, it's not about, you know, it's about joining forces on every level on the mental, the physical, the environment. So it's uh, it's about having an idea, it's about having some funding, it's about anything, you know. It's uh, I welcome it all because you never know what's not going to create something bigger than what you already create. Right. Well, I know and especially in Santa Barbara, I feel like we have so many amazing people here that we could really community. have a big Absolutely. big impact. Um because there are these mass media interventions for reducing stigma. Um, that are going on, and I guess basically what they're doing is they have face-to-face -face contact, um, and then they use newspapers, billboards, pamphlets, DVDs, television, radio, cinema, and the internet. And some of the anti-stigma campaigns um, have these interventions. I guess they can be kind of expensive, so they're trying to find ways. There's only been well, this one I was talking about. But because, right, because it's expensive to make film and commercials. Yeah, and everything has a cost, but again, you can limit the cost, and you can... Today, with technology, do a lot of things with very limited financial means. So that's the beauty of it. Yeah, so if you're interested in, in doing something like that, I, I'm always hoping someone will get inspired and and let other people know the importance of, you know, talking to each other about disagreeable topics and reducing mental health stigma. But I just think there's such an urgent need to bring together people who work in the media field to discuss, you know, these impacts um, I think, on their cumulative mental health. I and mean, we all have it in every area of our life. Um, but I'm always trying to imagine a world where each person does have that opportunity toward self-peace and through the um, ability to overcome mental health barriers and also, um, you know, reach treatment because I think we have a lot of barriers to treatment. Um, I was wondering, I have one more question for you. Um, how do you think we could put more film or journalism into our lives that would help create more mental health? Well, whether it's journalism or movies or anything, we're all creatures of, of creation, creative creatures. We are, all, we are creatures of unlimited power. And so it's about 
again, liberating your mind, liberating your fear, and realize you can create, co-create with, with the others anything you have. You can make miracle every day. And miracle, remember, it's an object of wonder. So everything is wonderful. Having a show like this is wonderful. Doing a, a documentary like I do is wonderful. Everything is wonderful. So, so look inside yourself and see what's wonderful about you and how you want to express it and become the miracle you want to see in the world. That hmm. would be my last few words I love to that. You. That's such a great words of wisdom. So be, what was it? Be the... Become the miracle that you want to see in the world. I love that. So kind of allowing yourself to dream up your own Exactly. Dream. You have no limitation. So mm -hmm. anybody that say something different, they are just trying to control you. Mm -hmm. And they can't. They have no right. You're free. You know, you're a creature of a divine creature of freedom. Right. Let yourself soar. And on the eve of 4th of July, I mean, freedom, hello, re-evolution, people. Th that's right. This is that's <laughs> the perfect. Maybe we should make a movie on it. You know, 4th of July is tomorrow. And July the 14th is in last week. I, you know, I celebrate revolution twice in a month. I'm the happier man on the planet. It's happening. we got to have this revolution <laughs> keep happening. Okay, well, I really am so thankful for having my special guest, Emmanuel Etier, on the show. Thank you for coming on and sharing your wisdom.